So guys, one step that's actually really, really critical, um, and I almost forgot to mention, um, but if you are gonna run this part of the charger inside the case, which most of you will to make it look cleaner, you're gonna have to snip the wires right here from the AC power adapter. The reason for that, there's no way this is gonna fit in the little hole. Um, so you're gonna have to snip it as close as you can to here. This is about a good length. You can leave it a little bit longer, um, but you wanna snip it. And then this part of it, we're gonna take these wires and we're gonna feed them right through the hole before we solder everything, uh, just as we did with the other wires. And the reason you wanna do this before you hook it up to the battery, because as soon as you hook up this charger to the battery, this side of the leads, there's already voltage coming out of here. So if you snip it before that, you may damage the uh, charger. Maybe you'll just blow the fuse and replace the fuse, but it's good to do it now because as soon as you, this charger, this side of it is hooked up to the battery, there's gonna be uh, 12 volts coming out of the back end of here. It's not gonna kill you. Um, it's not gonna do anything to you, but you'll just maybe damage uh, this bad boy. So uh, that's one thing you wanna make sure uh, that you do do ahead of time. And after that, you should be good to go. Um, so. When you cut it, you're gonna install this bad boy in here and then you're gonna to have to reconnect them again. Now, it's very, very, very important that you pay very close attention to these wires. There is a white line on one of them and not a white line on the other one, okay? So one of them has little white lines. You can see there the one on the right and the left one does it. You wanna make sure when you do solder them again, back to that one, that you solder them uh, correctly. So the white with the white and the one that doesn't have any markings with the one that doesn't have any markings over there. Um, you doing that wrong, you'll probably just damage this. I'm sure this has a fuse. Th one of these two have a fuse in there and you just blow the charger. Um, so be very, very careful with that. Other than that, it's very straightforward. I mean, it's like in uh, preschool where we learn just to match the colors. That's really all we're doing here. So this is how it all should look complete. Um, all there is to do now is heat shrink the opposite ends. Remember, anytime you're done dealing with one set of wires, make sure you heat shrink them so you don't accidentally uh, have them touch together. So I already did one side here. I need to do the other one here and I need to do the other one here. Because um, again, as soon as I was done with one of the sides, I immediately heat shrink it. So if you can see now we have the charger running here from the outside. We have the battery meter running from the outside as well. And then lastly, our main power lead running from the at from the outside. So <coughs> um, all there is to do now, heat shrink them. Um, as soon as I'll do that off camera, as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna show you guys how we uh, place the charger inside here, clean up as best we can all the wiring. We're gonna seal this bad boy up and all the very, very last step uh, we're gonna have to do is install here the barrel connector and then we are 100% complete with this DIY uh, battery uh, or battery backup. So here you guys can see how I ended up doing it. I actually didn't end up using any hot glue or double-sided tape. Um, this piece actually fit really snug in here. Um, there's really no way it's gonna come out because when I close it, this piece of foam is gonna hold it down. And like I said, it's pretty snug. I was able to route the wires through here, bring this part of it through here, and you can see I use zip ties to hold it all nice and neat. So all in all, I'm very happy how this looks. Um, and like I said, I have no worries of it going anywhere. I mean, it's rock solid. So we can go ahead and <coughs> close that guy. So we're here at the final steps, everyone. Um, all there is to do now is grab your main power leads. Be sure to cut the heat shrink. If you're not using heat shrink, obviously electrical tape. Um, but if you are using heat shrink, make sure you install it at this point. Um, you're actually gonna need three pieces of heat shrink here. You're gonna need the two that are gonna um, shield this. And then kind of for looks, you can't really tell now, but at the very end, this one is gonna go over both of them. Um, so what I'd recommend you to do is first install this one and then install these. So the way it works is we're gonna solder them together. We're gonna get these going. And then once those are sealed, this one's gonna come over to shield them uh, both together so it all in all just looks like a more solid nice connection you don't need to do it you can get away with these two but also this relieves stress from these joints another very important thing these wires are already live um, so you don't want to be cutting them together if you are exposing the wires you don't want them to touch because if they touch um, at this point the fuse would blow in there so you just need to change it out um, it wouldn't be a huge burn it would just give out you wouldn't even really hear it um, but just be aware that these wires are alive. So again, working with one of them at a time. Depending on what style of barrel connector you go with, 
Um, this one is a style that has the negative as an outside shield. So you just want to roll that one up. Your center one is going to be your positive and your, this one is going to be your negative. They sell different ones on Amazon. There's actually some that have a red and black on those. It'd be pretty obvious. When we are done though, we are going to check the polarity that's coming out of here to guarantee that it is correct. And obviously it doesn't uh, mess up our, our pump, but that's, that's very simple. So what I'm going to do right now is get them going. As soon as I'm done and complete, I'm going to show you how it looks and then we'll finish the video with testing this out and we should be good to go. So here we have the battery backup uh, complete. I've already done uh, the heat shrink. You can see what I meant by that final piece. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, and this here, you can pretty much do any length you want. I think this one here, I did about five and a half feet long, uh, which is plenty long. Plus the power, the charger itself is quite long. So all there is to uh, get it running now is hook this up. This always stays hooked up to a power input because um, that just will always make sure the battery is fully charged. You don't want it over time draining a little bit um, or anything like that. So to make sure everything is complete and operating correctly, you're going to need a voltmeter. Um, any voltmeter will work. Um, these things are like three, four bucks at Harbor Freight. <laughs> so you want to turn it on and you want to make sure that the center pin, the one inside is positive and the outside is negative. So to confirm that, you can see here the voltmeter, we're gonna get about 13 volts. So the center, you can see there, and then with the other hand, positive, or sorry, the negative, you can see right here, there's 13 volts. Indeed, it is working correctly. So if this wasn't correct, let me show you what it would look like. If I put, um, if it was opposite, it would actually have a negative sign of negative 13 volts. Um, so that's not at all what you want. You want to make sure it is indeed uh, positive and not the other way around. Because if it was doing the other, if it had a negative in front, I would just have to switch these wires on the back end. Um, but again, it is correct. Um, and that's really all there is to worry about. <clears throat> now, for you guys wondering, are you able to add another battery to this? Yes, you are. Um, obviously, the charger can charge both batteries. You would only need to buy the other battery, which are about you know, 12, 13 bucks on Amazon. Um, so you can see this this uh, unit here is very uh, cost effective. Um, when you're building one, it may not be too cost effective, but to add a second battery, it's only you know under 20 bucks. You can add the second battery, pay, uh, piggyback it off here, and then instead of 30 hours, you'll have 60 hours of operating power. And obviously, you guys don't all need to use a, a sealed case like this, as nice as this. So uh, that was just me kind of uh, going a little bit overboard with it. So all there really is to do now to um, seal the deal is get the battery meter. I'm gonna double side tape it to here. If you want this double side tape, let's say to maybe the front or the back or any way you want it, you would just uh, do it accordingly. Um, but I'm gonna do that here as soon as we end the video. I'm gonna double side tape it here. So anytime I wanna check the battery, I press a button and you can see we have uh, four green lights. So, the very final step, which again, I'm not going to be showing on camera, is just putting silicone um, in this hole. You don't need to put silicone, um, to be totally honest with you. I mean, you know, we're waterproofing this thing as if we're going to put it underwater. Um, and it's never going to have that much water thrown on it. But if you do wish to do it, you're more than welcome to just add some silicone here on the very top. Um, and then again, double side this or double side tape this or Velcro it or hot glue it any way you want. Um, but yeah, like I said, guys, all there is to do is hook this up to your uh, main power, hook it up to your gyre. Now you guys may be asking, will this work for an MP10? It will work for an MP10, but the only thing that's going to be different in an MP10 is this barrel connector. I think the MP10 uses a 1.3 millimeter, um, and you're going to have to confirm the voltage is correct. But other than that, it's very straightforward. So that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys saw it's not very difficult. It's very inexpensive to do. I am gonna have a link um, in the description below to everything I got or as much as I can uh, to give you guys. For you guys out there wondering or, or saying to yourself, you know what, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Is there any way you can do this for me, Eat Sleep Brief? Yes, I can, guys. Um, I actually was gonna release this as a product, believe it or not, um, a few months back, but then I decided uh, not to. It's just, I'm, I'm really busy with my job. So I was like, it's either I do one thing or another. So for you guys watching this video, if you'd like for me to make you one, um, I'm gonna leave my email down in the description below. Feel free to email me, contact me either here in the comments or 
on Instagram. I'd love uh, to make one for you just like this. So it can be 100% turnkey. So as soon as you receive it, you really just install it. You see it's a very low profile. It's not big at all. Um, but that's gonna be it guys. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comments box below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.